Uh, so finished 2 2. Manchester City lose Barcelona with a 4 1 victory then on penalties. Uh, we welcome Stuart Robson, who's in Philadelphia at the moment, ahead of Arsenal against Liverpool. Uh, we'll hear from him in a moment. But overall, Stevie, uh, what did we learn, if, if anything, uh, from that game last night? Ooh, I'm not so sure we learned too much. Um, I think it, it would be easy to point the finger at the back line. For Manchester, City, for Manchester City, which has looked vulnerable throughout this tour, hasn't it? But the problem is, it was Guardiola and Phillips who probably won't be playing at centre-back right. during the season. So it's kind of difficult to, to, to put that on them. I guess if you were going to criticise City, you would say that they had plenty of ball in and around the final third. Um, but a bit of good defending from Barcelona and, and a bit of not being able to break it down as much as they would like. Uh, meant that they couldn't really take advantage of that, certainly that 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 domination. Um, I think, to be honest, the story of the night was Barcelona. Yeah, we'll, talk, know, about, we'll, we'll talk about Barcelona in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I, I, again, <laughs> I, again, you're looking at... Jack Grealish really was yeah. the question going into the night. Yeah. And the fact is, we said before, that he had to do something to, to, to be remembered by his manager. And he did it. You know, they needed a goal. He ran half the length of the field. Uh, he finished it off well, and that's why they spent they spent 100 million on him to to create and score goals. And he scored goals last night. So for Grealish, I guess you've got to say it's a, a positive game. From a coach's perspective, Stevie, what do you do with him? How do you try and get him back into that mindset where he's at the top of the game? Is there anything you can do, or is it all down to him? Well, you, listen, a happy player usually is a is a good player, and you get him in in a position. Obviously, fitness is, is, is the first key. But after that, in terms of psychology, you get them happy, you get them bubbly, you get them on the ball. You know, you try and get them the ball as much as you can and you try and give them some freedom. You know, we know that Pep is always seems to be on all of them mm. and everything has to be the perfect the way he has to do it. I think with a guy like Jack Grealish, you need to give him some, a little bit of freedom. And if you do that, you'll get both jobs. You'll get what Pep wants but you'll also get the little stardust that, that Jack Grealish has himself. So I think that's the key for Jack Grealish. Uh, meanwhile, Shaq, we were obviously doing the studio ahead of the game yesterday, and a lot of it was about, this could be bad for Barcelona, yeah. because we talked about the number of players that, that were missing. Of course, a number of normal starters out because of injury or because of holiday or because of the Olympics. But in the end, they held themselves... Well, to their own, didn't they, against Absolutely. Manchester City? And, and a club, despite Barcelona's size, have always kind of relied on or called on on, on their academy for, for players coming through where we were talking. Pedri or Gavi or um, uh, last season where we were with Kobasi. And these kids, because that's what they are. They're their kids up against one of the best teams, albeit when, when they're full strength, in, in European football. And they did not look daunted. Um, and thoroughly enjoyed in their, their own experience. And now I think that gives Hansi Flick uh, a problem, but a problem that every single manager wants, okay. that, that they know they can call on, on, on young players or they have players who are able to step up if that's what's needed. Sorry, Sean. Can I just say that? I think what I was more impressed with was, yes, Man City had more of the possession and were, and were pushing the game, but as soon as Barcelona got any turnovers, they got the ball back. They went that way. It's quick, there was no ticky tacker. Yeah. No, it was a little bit. It was a bit like watching Spain during the during the Euros. You know, if there was a ball to be played first and foremost forward, that's what they did. They didn't just keep it the way that they used to. Uh, that that was the most impressive thing for me. But is it all irrelevant, Robbo? Because when everybody comes back, as impressive as someone like Pablo Torre was last night, we know really he's not going to feature. He probably won't feature much, but remember, it's only three weeks away and some of these players are still going to be injured. Some of them are still going to be uh, only a, a week into, into their training. So some of these youngsters might have to play in those first couple of games. And as Stevie said, I was really impressed with the way they passed the ball. They passed it forward, the clever little flicks around the corner. They broke the defensive lines of Man City. They played with confidence. I was really impressed with the centre forward, uh, Pau Victor, who made forward runs. Mm. He linked up the play. He looked excellent. And so did Pau Torres, who scored the second goal. Some of their moves 
movement and their passing I thought was excellent. And they didn't have that much possession. Man City dominated possession, but they made more of it. So I was very impressed with what Hansi Flick was getting from them, but also what they've learned through the academy. And they were far more positive than we've seen Barcelona for a couple of seasons. Uh, meanwhile, Shaq, of course, there's been a lot of rumours over recent weeks. Nico Williams, one of these stars of the Euros, to make a move from Athletic Club to Barcelona. Suggestions now, that isn't going to happen. How big a blow is that for Barcelona going forward? I, I, I'm sorry, once, once I saw this, this move kind of, or the suggestion that it's, it's collapsing, you can't help but, but think back to Xavi. Xavi is sacked because he, he, he speaks the truth about, mm. about Barcelona's position. And then it's, well, no, we're not. We're, really not. we're in a really strong position. We'll sign all these players. Oh, look, Javi was right all along. I mean, it's... it's. And I know we've been having this same discussion about Barcelona and their finances and, and everything uh, uh, about it for, for, for some time, but it just, it just beggars belief that we're still having this same conversation because the ownership is still kind of feeding us the same raw meat and, and expecting, expecting everybody to bite. It's a blow. It's a blow from a, a publicity perspective. It's a blow from, from a player personal perspective at 60 million for, for Nico Williams, given, given the, the, the summer that he just had. I thought that was an absolute bargain. And then you're trying to counter what Real Madrid did, not to suggest that Nico Williams is, is killing Mbappe or the equivalent of, but you want some good news if you're a Barcelona fan. And, and this just feels like another punch in the face. Right. That just, just be honest with us. Tell, if I'm a Barcelona fan, I'm not, be honest with us. Tell us where we are. Tell us what the long-term plan is. We'll kind of strap ourselves in for the disappointments of the next two or three seasons with the understanding that we'll be competing head-to-head -head with Real Madrid soon enough. But because of this kind of want to be seen to keep up, you, you, Barcelona are effectively keeping themselves back in, in, in every single regard. And, and, and for me, it's, it's just... Again, as a neutral, it's just like, well, here we go, here we go yet again. As a Barcelona fan, I can only imagine how frustrating. But there are reinforcements there. You've still got someone like Rafinha up there who can play in that position. So as much as it's a punch in the face, it's not necessarily a knockout blow because when you look at what Barcelona need, maybe it isn't some more right. reinforcements in the attacking third. Yeah, I think, I think last year they didn't, they didn't retain the title because they couldn't score goals. It really was more about letting too many in. I think, I think Ali said it last night, 24 goals yeah. more than the previous season. I mean, that's, that tells you where all the points disappeared from. So from that point of view, not getting Nico Williams isn't as big a blow. But for me, the real problem is you can't, you can't keep doing this with your fans and keep telling them you're going to sign Williams or anybody else yeah. and then at the last minute, oh, it's, it's broken down because it, it eventually just they're going to stop listening. Three, three weeks ago, we were seeing um, that Barcelona were on the verge of signing Nico Williams and uh, Dani Olmo. Now, all of a sudden, it's, well, we missed out on Williams, so therefore we're going to shift our attention to, to Dani Olmo. And, and even again, in such a short space of time, the kind of rhetoric just seems... Oh, you've just had enough of it, Shaq. I, I, I have. Yeah, you're I fed have. up. I, I don't believe and I'm not even a Barcelona fan. <laughs> you don't believe them.